And you're now with the Forerunner Chronicles. All right, everybody. So, at first, I thought it was a figment of my imagination until I saw this BBC News article entitled, Coffee Addiction. Do people consume too much caffeine? And then I realized it's not a figment of my imagination. There is an increasing number of caffeinated products that are hitting the shelves every year for consumer consumption, whether it be energy drinks or five hour energy supplements, no dose pills, chocolate bars, coffees, lattes, you name it, caffeine is finding its way into almost everything. But why are people so caught up with caffeine because when you use the word addiction that's a word that we usually think of when we think about alcohol or tobacco or narcotics illegal narcotics but caffeine can caffeine actually cause an addiction and are people really that enamored with caffeinated products well to get to the bottom of this i just bypassed bbc and being the inquisitive individual that i am I decided to hit the streets and talk with a few individuals on this issue. Take a look. Coffee. Mountain Dew. Just straight up coffee. Straight up coffee. Yeah. That's like a double shot of espresso from Starbucks. Coffee. My favorite caffeinated beverage is Diet Dr. Pepper. I guess because it's got the most caffeine in it. Been diabetic for a long time and uh, the flavor of it is different from anything else. Makes me happy. What do you think? <laughs> Might be three. I probably drink six a day. <laughs> so. I think in 12 hours I drank a two liter. That would be tough. No. No. <laughs> well, yeah, if I want a headache. And there you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, why is it that when we as a society discuss substances like alcohol or tobacco or even illegal narcotics for that matter, we always make it a point within the public square to warn individuals about the addictive nature of those substances and the unhealthful conditions that can be produced within the human body as a result of their ingestion. However, in the case of caffeine, in the case of that foreign substance, we hear little to no discussion of this nature within the public square. Now, is that just a coincidence or is that by design? Because from speaking with multitudes of individuals on this whole issue of caffeine, one thing is clear to me. And that is that there are millions of people that feel as though they cannot be productive, normal human beings without their daily dose of caffeine. And that's problematic. So to get to the bottom of this problem and so much more, I decided to sit down with my good friend, brother in Christ and licensed healthcare professional, Ron Meinhardt. And the result? was the production of this special Forerunner Chronicles documentary entitled Caffeinated. You don't have to wait to see it because it's coming up right now. God bless.
The Food and Drug Administration is investigating reports of five deaths after people drank Monster Energy drinks. The report claims people had bad reactions to the drink, which contains 240 milligrams of caffeine. I get caffeine withdrawals. I have to say, I get I get headaches if I don't have my Coke. Or today about the 14-year-old girl whose parents are suing the Monster Energy drink company. They claim she died after she drank two cans of Monster over a 24-hour period. According to the lawsuit, the girl had already been suffering from a disorder that weakened her blood vessels. An autopsy found that, quote, caffeine toxicity impaired her heart's ability to pump blood. Yeah, each can is about 24 ounces, Chef, and that contained about 240 milligrams of caffeine. That's about equal to seven cans of Coca-Cola, but it's less than one 16-ounce cup of coffee, say, from Starbucks. I'm addicted to Starbucks drinks. In the early 1900s, the United States faced a crippling problem, and that was the fact that many individuals, many citizens, were addicted to narcotics. In fact, if you wanted some cocaine, all you had to do is go get your favorite open happiness beverage, Coca-Cola. Many people were opening happiness, but it was leading to a disability and a disabling effect that was destroying their lives. Now, if you wanted some heroin, all you had to do is go to your local pharmacy and get some heroin cough drops. Said it soothes the throat, makes you feel better, makes you wake up on the bright side every morning. But we know heroin today makes people steal from their grandmothers, makes people rob from their children. Is it all worth it today? Well, back then, fortunately, the United States government said it's not worth it anymore. In 1914, the Harrison Narcotic Act eliminated the use of these narcotic substances in the common formulas of daily living, such as the colas and the cough syrups and the lozenges and many of these other over-the-counter remedies. Now, that was good and that was fine, but what happened to these industries when they were faced with this ban and they had been used to making multitudes of profits off of these enslaved addicts? What did they do? Did they just close up shop? I'll submit to you something even more deadly and dangerous. They chose to replace narcotics with caffeine. Caffeine was a little known substance at that time. Although many people had reported its ill effects, it seemed to be the perfect replacement for these companies. Why did they choose caffeine? Perhaps they knew something that the American public did not know. Caffeine is a white crystalline substance that has been isolated from a plant source. What did the plant use it for? Well, do you realize caffeine is a natural insecticide. Bugs come and land on the leaves that are containing the caffeine substance. They eat of the leaves and you know what happens? They start acting erratic and shaking and moving around. They lose their natural camouflage. And as a result, birds and other animals come and eat them and devour them. But why are 90% of Americans today consuming a natural plant insecticide? Let's talk a little bit about caffeine, about the addictive qualities of this white crystalline substance that's found in so many products today. Did you realize that the leaders of these industries that are producing these chemical laden products have one thing to say about their product and that is it doesn't really cause a full blown addiction. They will submit scientific research trying to validate this claim. But you know what? It is well documented that there are many physical side effects of caffeine. How does it happen? Well, for one thing, caffeine blocks the effects of a hormone in the body. This hormone is called adenosine. Adenosine is kind of like a breaking hormone. It kind of slows down responses. It inhibits certain responses. It also keeps the arteries open so that the blood can flow normally through the system. What happens when we have caffeine? Well, did you realize in your brain, 
your blood flow is reduced by an average of 27%. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd like to have all the blood in my brain that I can. I need it. Our brains need blood, they need oxygen, they need glucose to be able to function properly. What happens is people that are consuming caffeine are dwarfing the capacities of their brain. This goes on for a certain amount of time, but you know what happens to the hormone, the adenosine? It keeps building up in the body. It didn't go away. It didn't go away. In fact, adenosine is a natural byproduct of just work, of just thinking. You're going, as long as you stay awake, you're going to be building up adenosine in the body. So what happens all of a sudden when the caffeine starts to wear off? Well, the adenosine is in higher levels and all of a sudden your vessels open wide and it's like a floodgate opens on your brain. You get a pounding headache. This is how it works. This is why people need to constantly take caffeine or even caffeine containing drugs to get rid of their headaches. I'll submit to you the best way is to stop the caffeine. Get rid of the caffeine. You might go through some physical withdrawal symptoms, but it's worth it in the end. Trust me, I did it myself. Going through this process of addiction with caffeine and finally getting off, I realized my life is much better as a result. But there are many people today that are hooked not only on the physical side effects of caffeine, but they're hooked on something much more subtle and much more degrading and disabling than even physical side effects can be. Now the physical side effects of caffeine can extend up to a certain point and that is physical death. Did you realize if you had one drop of liquid caffeine penetrate your skin, you would succumb to sudden death as a result. It's deadly. It's a deadly toxic poison. So why are we continuing to put it into our bodies? Well, I'll submit to you it partially has to do with the physical side effects. One of them is headaches. One of them is the beneficial, seemingly beneficial effects of being able to stay up later at night instead of going to sleep. Well, did you realize that adenosine levels build up in the body as a result of work? Did you realize that 90% of healing and restoration takes place while we're sleeping? Work, rest, work, rest. It's a cycle, it's a normal cycle. But what caffeine does is it tricks the body into thinking it does not need to rest. It tricks the brain into thinking we don't have to listen to all these hormones, to all these adenosine molecules. We can stay awake.